Okay, in this video we're gonna calculate i to the i in a pretty convoluted way. But as a consequence of this, we'll get to see some interesting notions of the matrix exponential and the matrix logarithm. So first I wanna start off with this fact. And this fact says there is a version of the complex numbers inside the set of real two by two matrices. And so we can think about putting this set of complex numbers into this set of real two by two matrices by this map. So we take the complex number A plus BI and it goes to this two by two matrix where we have A's on the diagonal minus B up here and B down here. And so notice we don't hit um, all of the real two by two matrices. That's why I have this little bend in the arrow here. We only hit some of them. And the image that we have over here is actually an isomorphic copy of the complex numbers. And so that's why I wrote down here, we call this an isomorphism. And this is actually an isomorphism of fields because C is a field, if you know what that means. Okay, so now let's observe uh, some things. So let's first observe that real numbers, um, real numbers in C, so if we just take a number A and C, those correspond to matrices of this form. So those correspond to matrices that are A, 0, 0, A. In other words, these are multiples of the 2 by 2 identity matrix. Now the next thing that I want to notice is that pure imaginary numbers correspond, so notice pure imaginary numbers of, are of the form I times B where B is a real number. Those correspond to matrices um, of this form, zero minus B, B zero. And that's under this map that I've defined over here. So now notice that is equal to uh, B times this matrix 0, minus 1, 1, 0. So our I inside of uh, this set of matrices, which we'll call M2 by 2 R, our I is the following matrix. Uh, 0, minus 1, 1, 0. So we don't really want to call that I because that's often used for the identity matrix. We don't really want to call it little i because that's inside the actual complex numbers. So maybe we'll call this thing J. Good. So like I said, our goal is to find I to the I using this matrix representation. So in fact, what we want to do here is we want to find J to the J in terms of the matrices. In other words, we want to find um, a matrix to the power of another matrix. Okay, good. So I'm going to erase the board. Then let's unpack what this actually means, a matrix to the power of another matrix, and then uh, we'll see what we get. So, so far we've seen that the complex number I corresponds to this matrix, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, which we call J, and our goal is to find this J to the J power, a matrix to a matrix power. So let's see, what does that even mean if A and B are uh, two by two matrices, or really Really just any matrices, they probably need to be square, then what is A to the B? Okay, good. So now let's take inspiration from numbers. So if little a and little b are real numbers, then uh, it's well known that a to the little b is the same thing as the following. So this is the same thing as e to the b natural log of a. Okay, good. So let's see how we can unpack that and why that's true. So notice by using exponent rules, this is e to the natural log of a, all to the b power, but then e to the natural log of a is a. So what that means is we need the notion of a matrix exponential and a matrix logarithm. So we need to know what a to the b is, which by that inspiration, we would have this would be e to the b times the natural log of a. So we need to know what is the expo 
what's the exponential of a matrix? And then what's the log of a matrix? Great. So uh, again, using inspiration from the Taylor series of e to the x, we can see that this is equal to the sum n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So that's exactly how we're going to define the exponential of a matrix. So e to a matrix A will be equal to the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial and then just bunch of powers of this matrix A. So that's how we'll define um, this exponential of a matrix. Okay, good. I'll clean up the board and then we'll get to uh, how we will define the logarithm of the matrix. Okay, so we left off at this point. We said the matrix exponential of A is equal to the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial A to the n. And now, what we really want to do is define the matrix logarithm and the matrix exponential to be inverse operations of each other. So, kind of rather cheaply, we'll define the, the log, I'll write natural log, although it's more typical to write log, of b equals a if e to the a equals b. So in other words, I've defined this log of a matrix to be the inverse operation of the exponential of a matrix. Now, we won't use this in this video, but you can also do the following. You can define the log of a matrix using a power series, using the Taylor series expansion of the natural log. I evaluated the, this matrix B, which gives you B minus the identity inside. So I'll leave it to you to figure that part out. You essentially take the antiderivative of the geometric series. Okay, great. So from here, I want to look at an example that is going to help us answer this, uh, this main goal. Okay, so let's consider... This very special matrix A, which is given by 0 minus theta, theta 0. Okay, great. And now what we'll notice is that A squared is equal to the following. So A squared is equal to minus theta squared, 0, 0, minus theta squared. And then A cubed is equal to uh, 0 theta cubed minus theta cubed 0. And then finally, we could see that a to the fourth, a to the fourth is theta to the fourth, 0, 0, theta to the fourth. So that gives us some pretty good motivation for what an arbitrary power of A will be. I'll let you uh, prove that on your own by induction if you're psyched. But what we get is A to an even power, so A to the 2n is equal to minus 1 to the n, and then theta to the 2n, 0, 0, theta to the 2n. So we've got a diagonal matrix, and then a to the 2n plus 1 equals, again, minus 1 to the n, and 0 minus theta to the 2n plus 1, uh, theta to the 2n plus 1, and then 0. So we've got zeros on the diagonal and non-zeros off the diagonal. Okay, good. So now what we'll notice is that e to the a, in this case... So we can use this form right here, but since our even and our odd powers are somewhat separate, we'll break it up into two pieces. So uh, we'll break it up uh, as follows. So this will be the sum, n equals 0 to infinity of the even terms. So this will be minus 1 to the n over 2n factorial, and then theta to the 2n, 0, 0, theta to the 2n. Okay, great. And then next, we'll have this as plus the sum n equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n. Now we have the odd term, so 2n plus 1 factorial. And here we have 0 minus theta to the 2n plus 1, uh, theta to the 2n plus 1, 0. Okay.
Fantastic. We'll notice uh, what we get here, and when we add all of these together, this looks an awful like the Taylor series for cosine. So if we move these sums inside of uh, the matrices, we get the Taylor series for cosine. Same thing over here, but this is the Taylor series for sine. So we get the following matrix. This is equal to cosine theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta. Okay, good. So now I'll clean up the board, I'll bring that to the top, and then we're almost ready to finish it off. So let's see where we've left off. I've renamed, okay, let's see where we've left off. I've renamed this matrix A sub theta. So we have zero minus theta, theta zero. We calculated on the last board that E to the theta was this rotation matrix. So cosine theta is on the diagonal, minus sine theta, sine theta which tells us that since this is the exponential of a theta, that tells us that the log of this rotation matrix is equal to a theta. In other words, it's that guy over there. So now notice the following. Notice that our matrix J up there, which is playing the role of the complex number I, that is exactly this a, um, that is exactly this evaluated at theta equals pi over two. So notice that's equal to cosine pi over two, uh, minus sine pi over two, uh, sine pi over two, and cosine pi over two because cosine pi over 2 is 0 and sine pi over 2 is 1. So notice that tells us that um, the natural log of j, in other words, the matrix logarithm of j, has to be the following. So this is going to be the matrix 0 minus pi over 2, pi over 2, 0. Okay, so now we're ready. So now we can say i to the i. Remember, that's our goal. So that's the same thing as j to the j in this weird matrix world, which, uh, again, let's write that out. That's 0 minus 1 minus 1, 0, to the power of 0 minus 1, 1, 0, a matrix to a matrix power. But now that's going to be equal to e to the j natural log of j. Good. Now that's equal to e to, now let's rewrite what uh, j is, so that 0, minus 1, 1, 0. And then we calculated the natural log of j is equal to 0 minus pi over 2, pi over 2, 0. But now we've got a fairly simple 2 by 2 matrix multiplication to do up there. So that gives us e to the pi over 2, 0, 0, pi over 2. So in other words, we get pi over twos on the diagonal, but now it's not too hard to show using this definition of the matrix exponential, especially when we have a diagonal matrix like this, that this gives us the diagonal matrix e to the pi over two, zero, zero, e to the pi over two. But now if we put that back into a complex number world, instead of in matrix world, we get that this is equal to e to the pi over 2, because this is a pure real number. And so we've gotten the pretty standard result using maybe the most difficult way possible.